With the crisp autumn temperatures, there's nothing like a warming bowl of soup to embrace the season and celebrate all the flavors that autumn has to offer. In this video, I'm gonna show you three different flavor-packed soups that are not only delicious, but will come together in no more than 30 minutes. Whether you're just short on time or you need a quick and easy meal, I'm sure you will love these soups as much as we do. My first soup is a white bean kale soup. And as you can tell, I love cooking with olive oil and adding a lot to that to my pot. And then I'm cutting up an onion into small dice, adding that to the oil as it's heating and getting all of that in there, giving that a good stir to saute the onions and soften them up. That is just so flagrant. And then I have a vegetable peeler from Germany that I love using for peeling potatoes because you actually get very thin peel strips and don't waste a lot of potato and cut up the potato into small dice as well. I like when in my soups the sizes of the vegetables are pretty much uniform. Same vegetable peeler I use for my carrots and cut the carrots into small dice just like my grandmother was always cutting things um, with a knife sort of going against your thumb very carefully but that's just how we've always done it. Then I'm adding some water to my soup and white beans and strips of Parmesan rind that I keep in the freezer for all these soups where a little bit of umami is a great addition. And if I don't have any stock or bouillon of myself or bone broth, I add store-bought bouillon and put a lid on and cook this until all the vegetables are soft. I also like to add some garlic. Sometimes I like to add the garlic a little bit later in the game rather than sauteing it with the onions. So that's what I'm doing it here. I'm tossing it in later. I feel like I get a little bit more goodness from the garlic here and the garlic taste. I got some kale from my garden and I'm chopping them up into really small strips. It not only adds a pop of color to this whole dish, but it also makes it so much more flavorful and healthy, of course. And then I have rosemary, which gives it just that little bit of, I don't know, maybe Italian Tuscan taste or reminiscent of it. I'm checking my vegetables here. If they're done, they, they're pretty soft. The potatoes and the carrots need to be soft. And obviously if you cut them into small dice, they cook faster. So since this is all under 30 minutes, this is one way you can cut down on the cooking time. And then I'm adding the kale to the soup and I'm specifically not stirring the kale in, but just letting it sit on top. So to let it steam more than really cook it. Checking up on it. Everything's really soft and creamy almost, even though I didn't add any cream, just giving it a good stir. And then I'm just gonna dish it up. Makes a great dinner with a slice of fresh baked bread and maybe a green salad on the side, or just like that. And then I add a sprinkle of chili flakes to it and that's our first soup here. Another night, because we love the soup so much, I added some chopped up white sausages, chicken, I think they were Italian chicken sausages. That makes that meal a little bit more substantial if you're feeding a crowd or many hungry people. And then I'm just doing the same thing here with heating the sausages up in that they were cooked sausages in the soup and then adding the kale on top. But essentially it's the same soup, same recipe, just a different day. And when the kale is all softened, I stir it in and that is that soup. For my next soup, which is a turkey pumpkin chili, super fall, 
inspired. Again, we're starting with a good amount of olive oil. While this is heating, I'm dicing my onion and I like to, you can't really see what I'm doing, but I like to keep the onion slices together. It kind of helps with not having to cry so much when you're cutting onions. <laughs> And now I'm adding my ground turkey, which is really super affordable to get from the store. And I'm browning that in the olive oil while I'm continuing to cut the onions. I also have a carrot again that I'm peeling with my vegetable peeler that I love so much. I might actually leave a link in the description box below so you can find it because it's really handy and it's very ergonomic. As soon as the turkey is a little bit browned and cooked, you get a little bit more flavor if you do get it browned on the bottom. I'm now adding, cutting up some more garlic here that I will throw in with all the other vegetables. And sometimes I don't really have a recipe. I just see what I have and what kind of goes together. This is not a chili in the traditional sense, but it makes use of the flavors and the ingredients you have in the fall. It's also perfect if you have any leftover turkey from your Thanksgiving meal. And you don't really need a recipe. You just kind of cook with the ingredients you have. Now I'm adding spices here. Cumin is always a really good one for a chili. And then some paprika powder, or it might've been chili powder, or a little bit of both, but you get the idea here. Then I'm adding my vegetables. I have said in a recent video that I'm a really neat cook. I like to keep things neat as I go along. It cuts down on the cleanup time and it just makes it a little bit more pleasant. So adding the onions and the garlic here until they're fragrant, so taking them away. I just absolutely love seeing what a dish can turn out as I'm cooking. I'm cutting up the carrots in really small, fine dice. As I said earlier, I like when the ingredients have the same size instead of having bigger chunks and smaller chunks because I think then the flavors blend a little bit better and when you take a bite you get a little bit of everything if that makes any sense. So putting all the carrots right into my big cast iron pot here and then I have actually butternut squash. I call it pumpkin because I like butternut squash a little bit better than pumpkin. I think it's a little bit more flavorful and I have that from another recipe. Often I like to make a very big pumpkin or butternut squash and save some because I can always use it in another recipe. So I'm adding that to my turkey and then to get a little bit more out and I need a bit more water. Why not add the water to my little mason jar, swirl it around and get all the little bits out of there. And there you go, very frugal and you cut up down on cleanup time for the jar. For a chili, you need some beans. Again, I like the white beans a lot lately. I've been cooking with them and Trader Joe's has really affordable prices for those white beans. And again, here's my chicken bouillon that I'm adding for flavor. I like that because then I don't have to go so heavy on the salt, but I'm also getting a lot more flavor. And I guess that I'm getting to the point where I have more bone broth and chicken stock later in the year, but not right now. And here it is because of the beans, it's very thick and creamy, even though I didn't add any cream, but I am adding frozen tomato paste that I always keep in the freezer for soups like this when I just need a little bit and a good helping of lime. I think that really brings out all the flavors here and adds a little bit more interest and taste. Some salt, because it does need a little bit of salt. And giving that another stir. And to serve it up, I have grated some cheddar cheese and I cut up some 
cilantro earlier and I sprinkle a good generous amount of the grated cheese on top and the cilantro and that's our second soup. For my next soup is a French style onion soup. I like to start with a really sharp knife and I use these carbon knives that do rust so you can't keep them on the counter wet they have to always keep them dry which is not a problem but i love them so much and i like to sharpen my knives before i actually start cutting the onions i have already added some olive oil and butter good amount again to my enamel cast iron pot and now i'm cutting the onions i feel like if i have a very sharp knife it gives it a cleaner cut cuts down on the crying that happens when you <laughs> cut onions and i keep them together like this and add them to the pot so i'm going to go to through about a good pound of onions here for four people And I'll saute those onions. You can make this a little bit more elaborate by letting the onions really caramelize and brown. You might need a little bit more than 30 minutes. So if you are in a rush and you want a French inspired onion soup, you can make that a little bit quicker or you can make it a little bit longer. And then I like to add a good helping of sherry wine to it that adds a little bit of sweetness without having to add any sugar and it just gives it a little bit more depth of flavor that i love so much and here i'm adding some bouillon to make it a good soup and fresh thyme from my garden that i'm putting directly in there and that really gives it that nice fresh french taste that's so authentic I love cooking with fresh herbs and love cutting them from my garden. So I'll put a lid on and let that cook down. In the meantime, I am grating some Greer cheese, which is the authentic French cheese for this recipe here. And I'll grate the cheese directly on my cutting board. And I had to move it over a little bit because um, you'll see in a moment why, because I wanted a pile of cheese on one side of the cutting board and keep the other side of the cutting board for what's going to come next. There's always so much that sits on the box grater. And here is some day old bread, or maybe it's even two or three days old. So it's not super fresh, but it's actually perfect for this recipe because the drier slices soak up some of the onion soup as you actually grill it under your broiler in the oven. I have some other smaller end pieces. And before I'm ready, I'm seasoning the soup with a little bit of salt, giving that a taste and a good stir. I love using my lion head onion soup bowls here that I specifically love for this recipe. And I'm ladling the soup directly into those bowls. They're very oven proof and for four people i like to make sure that everybody gets pretty much the same amount you know how that is when you have a family then you have some bowls that are bigger and some bowls that are smaller or they have more in it and it's always good to have it equally divided up between the four bowls so i'm putting all the onion soup into my lion head bowls on a cookie sheet because then it makes transferring it to the oven a little bit easier and also removing because when you remove it from the oven from underneath the broiler those soup bowls are going to be really hot and you can't touch them and it's just so much more convenient to have them sit on a cookie sheet adding the last bits of soup to the bowls and here i'm putting the pieces of bread in there sometimes you have to cut your bread a little bit to make it fit into the bowls but these slices were just perfect cut in half and little bits and pieces there on the side. And then I'm adding my grated cheese right on top. That's going to be melted over the 
bread slices and that makes it so yummy and so rich and so good. I already have my broiler on, put my soup right underneath the broiler for five or 10 minutes, depending on your broiler or until the cheese is melted and bubbling. And here it is, mm, so yummy. And that's my French onion soup. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen and I'll see you in the next video.